housing production plan subcommittee meeting uh, Monday, November 18th uh, from 6 to 8 p.m. Um, and tonight we are going to look at the housing goals. Um, we'll finalize those and we'll review implementation strategies for the plan. Um, and then we'll talk about uh, the presentation to the planning board and select board, which will be the kind of the last step before we do a public review period and then submit the plan for approval to the state. Um, but first, I guess, um, before we get into the goals, last time I handed out the full uh, draft as of um, a few weeks ago <laughs> that included an introduction, the housing needs assessment, and the development um, conditions and constraints. Um, so I just wanted to ask if there were any, uh, if there was any questions or changes that you wanted made to that or comments, if you had a chance to review it. Look fine. Everyone went through it. Look fine. <laughs> and there'll be more opportunity to provide feedback on the whole plan if you hadn't had a chance to look at it closely. Um, okay. So. What I passed out is just the housing goals section, which is section four, and then um, section five is implementation strategies. Um, so we can go through this. So what I did in section four is basically everything we talked about last time about the, the workshop and the results of the workshop, I summarized a lot of that information in here leading up to three goals. So that the state has an outline of, of what you have to include in a housing production plan in terms of the goals. And the first goal is the mix of housing types that are desired in town. So that was good. The workshop helped us determine that. And so um, I have a written goal for that. The next one is- The workshop help us determine what? The mix of housing types that would be um, supported in town in the future. So the workshop, we started off with the premise that currently, um, I think 80 percent, I'm forgetting my percentages, but a, a large percentage of homes in town are currently single family. Okay. 81 and, percent. Yeah. yeah, and then a smaller percent are two family and multifamily. And so moving forward, you know, what do, what do people want to see in town? So that's, that's what that goal is about. Um, the next goal is where in town do you want new housing to be located? And then the final goal is just your, your production goal, which is set by the state, which is that 11 units of affordable housing in one annual year um, to get certification. So um, we can start with the mix of housing types goal, which is on page 75. So I guess what I was getting at is, yep. I mean, this is based on, I mean, public input shows mm -hmm. a desire to reverse this trend. Yes. So now, I mean, I would mm -hmm. want to be, I think, a little more clear about public input. Okay. So that was the handful of people that were here, I think you're referring to. Are you referring to more than that? Y yeah, it's not. So the main, the main um, public outreach that we did was that workshop, the community workshop. We also did a, um, we had a lunchtime talk at the senior center that was well attended. So uh, input from that is included in here. Um, and then also just the whole process of meeting over the course of the last, you know, however many months um, and, and discussing and I, I kind of think that what Vern might be talking about is that <clears throat> there's been resistance to this kind of housing in town. Mm -hmm. Now, um, if, if this promotes the uh, self-preservation for those people, then they might come around, but it's mm. it's going to be a tough one to. That's what I am having a tough to time through. with at the senior center. Yeah, so <laughs> it's 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 a, uh, you know, I, I I understand, and I think if people come to understand what it's all about, maybe mm -hmm. that'll change. But I think that overwhelmingly in town, people don't want multi-unit housing. That's been the the open meetings we've had on other topics. That's what's come out of it. I'm only asking because it seems like the flavor of this is sort of the public has been polled, even though mm -hmm. it's not, you know, you're not saying that in so many words. It sounds like the public is, is stating their 
feeling here, and I just don't know about a consensus on that okay. or a majority there. I mean, the people that are interested and have come to a meeting, mm -hmm. which are townspeople, of course, yep. say this. I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not trying to be picky, but it's, mm -hmm. there's a little bit of a, I don't know, there's a little feeling that's mm -hmm. being conveyed yeah. here that I think may not be entirely accurate. Okay. So, well, how about I read read the goal statement and then we can talk about how maybe we should sure. word it sure. so that you're comfortable. Um, so this is mix of housing types desired in Deerfield. To, pro to provide more housing choices and opportunities for Deerfield residents and workforce, the town of Deerfield will support and encourage a greater diversity of housing types in the future, including a larger percentage of two-family and multi-family homes. To make use of the existing housing stock while adding new housing to established neighborhoods, the town will encourage the creation of accessory apartments and will facilitate the rehabilitation of vacant substandard housing. To provide options for older residents, a variety of senior housing will be supported, including affordable senior housing and assisted living facilities. Finally, to ensure that our seniors, our workforce, and our children and grandchildren have the choice to live in town, housing that is affordable for a mix of incomes and household types will be supported. <clears throat> so that's the goal statement that yeah, I had sounds cool. yeah. and, come and up with, but it's a draft. Thing, the thing you know, that, that, <clears throat> that we just were talking about yep. is um, <clears throat> um, the few people that have taken the time to come and talk to me about it, mm -hmm. they they look at it as though it's Section 8 housing or something like that. So mm -hmm. I don't think that it's been defined well enough to the general public. Okay. And then when when this uh, when this actually comes up, um, will it be voted on by somebody other than the planning board or? or Not the the plan itself has to be endorsed by the planning board and the board of selectmen. Okay. So that but a lot of the implementation strategies will need broader support. Well, you know, especially things like zoning changes or things that have to come to town meeting. So yeah, that that's so eventually it'll go to need, town meeting. Yeah, okay. some of it, some of the implementation. It's going to take a lot of work, I think, to make it, um, you know, to make it easy to get it through. Wouldn't okay. you say? Mm -hmm. I don't think it's. I don't think this is going to be something that's going to you know go through without question i don't really know the ropes here i don't know how it gets molded into a form i mean who takes the ball from there i mean obviously you've done a ton of work putting this together and you know some town input here but i mean this is a lot of, of your efforts how does it happen from here well that's part of what we have to talk about tonight oh, is cool. um because it's your plan it's the planning board took the lead on the project but it's a, it's a town document moving forward mm -hmm. and so part of the implementation strategies are to figure out how to build local capacity to keep some of this momentum moving and um to do some of that outreach it sounds like it sounds like something that should be included, which I don't think I've included in the implementation strategies that we'll talk about, is, is a lot more outreach to the community to um, well, it's going to be provide a more of, information on I it. I think that the first, the first hurdle that we're going to have is the zoning. Okay. I think that's going to be the first zoning. The first hurdle that we'll have to go over is that um, if the zoning gets put in place, that'll be one of the biggest hurdles. Mm -hmm. I, I think that I think you're right. That I that I think that you know we've been working on this plan together as a small subset, and and we're, we're staff support to this. We don't live in town, so mm -hmm. you know we can only help guide the process. The real, you know, where the rubber hits the road is where this plan goes out, and then once the plan is adopted, it only becomes a, a protective document for the town in terms of being able to have some influence if there's a 40b permit that comes your way one of the you know comprehensive permits and that's that's i think the idea is is that deerfield what we're making here is the argument that this is a very attractive place for people who want to move you know that it's in a good location it's got a lovely small town feel you had that whole complete streets process in the spring where you know people just spoke about what a great little village south deerfield could be so it feels like when the market comes back that you guys are going to be ripe for a lot of development activity. Now, when that comes your way, um, since you are substantially, substantially below 
the 10 percent that the state would look at somebody could come and look to do affordability affordable housing development as part of a development and if you don't if you haven't done any work in terms of doing taking a leadership role in creating some affordable housing then you're going to be subject to whatever 40 b <coughs> rolls out you know and i know that that's a very controversial um planning process permitting process and the idea is to give you guys the opportunity to nip it in the bud or direct how your housing development's going to happen so you can gear it you know guide it in a way that feels more comfortable and more more in line with what you want to see happen in deerfield but it is going to require i mean this plan means nothing unless you start to implement it mm -hmm. yeah so the choice is more to just you know be proactive <coughs> and try to take control over it versus just you know waiting for something like that to happen where a 40b comes in and um you don't have any anything to you know say hey this is what we've done all this work this is what we'd like to see um and again the the production goal of 11 units over a course of a year you know if that were to be accomplished then you'd actually have legal you know um certification sure. for one year and um where you would have complete control to say you know no to a comprehensive permit well, in, in, in I just quickly reviewed what was sent out and uh, what we've done, and my feeling was that, um, that if, and I don't know what the rest of the planning board is going to say, but for me, um, pick off a little piece of this mm -hmm. and do the zoning and maybe try to get our 11 units and maybe more, but get the, get the minimum this year and, um, and then move forward with some more, you know. Uh, we've got the global plan here in front of us, but... Mm -hmm. Uh, now we need to kind of pick off pieces at a time, and maybe that that picking off pieces and going slowly um, will will lead to um, you know the public seeing it more. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, and just I think that's point. true. That if you pick off a piece and you pick off, say, the zoning first, you know that well, not just I'm talking I'm talking to the zoning as the big piece and a little piece of the zoning because, mm -hmm. the, in, in my opinion here, we went through all whole year just just rezoning the center of town here mm -hmm. and um I, and i can't see doing the whole town and trying to change all of the zoning for everything I and mean, we might be able to but i don't know well and a little piece of you can talk mm -hmm. yeah absolutely and a little piece of the zoning <laughs> isn't necessarily a geographical piece because yeah. there's strong support for accessory apartments mm -hmm. in in single family mm -hmm. homes and that would be throughout the town yep. and, and well, this is that saying, change would quickly yield the 11. it could it could potentially um, but but the thing is I, I i think we've got to take and look at it and and set up pieces so that when we go along we either do as accessory you know change change our mother-in-law apartments i forget you probably know better but that's an example that. change that yeah. change that first and yeah. but, but then okay. but you also need to have some kind of target to say that how would we get the 11 units if you're going to do it right mm -hmm. so yeah. so whatever we do it needs to be it needs to have a goal of 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 having the uh possibility of getting those 11 units i would think right and it could be a combination of things uh, happening too that could get you there but i think that's a good point of um um maybe when we go through the strategies we can kind of identify which ones might be something that could go ahead in the next few years as you know more realistic mm -hmm. and then some of the others could be like you know longer term um, so that would be good to identify as we go through don't mind us we're just taking off on tangents <laughs> no it's it's good and i already have some well you want this to, to become a living document yeah. and if there's not a, a sustained conversation that continues after this plan has been approved that's then, my concern then mm -hmm. then we're spinning our wheels and, and and you're right that the town has to feel like they're somewhat invested in this document participated in the creation of it yes. and are willing to pick it up and to move it forward after the plan has been adopted right. or or if it chooses not to adopt it then to okay. to be aware of the, right. the the challenges that the town might face in light of not having that housing plan in place exactly and the, and the and the planning board is going to come up against it financially here mm -hmm. because um we're only halfway through the year and we've already spent our whole budget plus 
from the FERCOG for, uh, you know, for technical assistance. For technical assistance. <laughs> and yeah. so we don't know where the money's going to come from to do the next section. <laughs> Well, there's the we'll, next we'll round of DLTA. We'll talk about it in December. <laughs> What's that? There's the next round of DLTA, which will be. Well, no, I'm thinking. Yeah, I'm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Um, and that's another thing too, actually, that I don't think I include a little bit about funding sources for some of these, um, for some of the. Imp okay. Um, Have fun. <laughs> the hill. Yeah, just go up the hill. <laughs> um, that's a good point, too. I can add, I think I was planning on adding kind of a funding sources um, section to. Well, this is not specifically just for this, but yeah. for what the planning board needs to do for the rest of the year for right. everything. I if know. another marijuana thing comes up or mm -hmm. something else comes up, then yeah, I actually put we're going to be in, in trouble. About that. Not about marijuana, but about just the kind of technical assistance needed. Right. Um, okay, so... So was there anything that jumped out about that goal statement that you'd want to change, or should we move on? Well, it is general enough to cover a lot of stuff, that's for sure. Yeah, I think it's fine. Okay. And, again, um, if you want to look at this more closely okay. after yeah. and get, you know, send, email me uh, mm -hmm. your comments. No problem there. Okay, so the next, the next goal has to do with areas to target housing development, both market rate and affordable. Um, and so from... From the workshop and also from the discussion at the senior center, um, the Oxford site was identified as a pretty obvious one. Um, the South Deerfield Village in general, which basically encompasses the current uh, CVRD district and the smaller commercial districts within it. Um, and then the other area that seemed to have a re some consensus was on routes 5 and 10, Greenfield Road, um, uh, between North Main Street and North Hillside Road, that kind of commercial area was identified as a potential area that could see some mixed-use development and, and have some actual housing kind of as part of that area. Um, so those were the main areas to target housing. And then I also wrote up, you know, for some of those other areas of town, uh, the types of housing that would be desired there if and when housing happens there. But those weren't as much of a target. Um, I've already been hit by a developer who's looking in town. What was that? I've already been hit by a developer that's looking in town to do some, to put in some single family homes. He's looking to do some housing. So it's, you know, there's some interest. Yeah, well, home. the, the um, I guess county, well, across the county, in, in Deerfield as well as in other areas of the county, there's um, it's a tight housing market in terms of vacancy rates. Um, right. There's not a, a lot of available housing, so no. as the market you know picks up, there'll likely be more development. Mm -hmm. um, so the goal statement for this is kind of long. <laughs> um, so the first section. Which to page? So it's on page 80. <clears throat> so this is areas to target new housing development in Deerfield. To preserve Deerfield's rural character and agricultural forests and water resources, and to simultaneously support a vibrant mixed-use village center, new housing will largely be targeted within walking distance of the South Deerfield Village Center. The former Oxford food site presents an opportunity for a mix of commercial or office uses, and affordable and market rate housing with an emphasis on senior housing, small single family and two family infill development consistent with the historic character of the surrounding homes will be supported along um, existing village streets as well as the possibility for new subdivisions that preserve remaining agricultural land or create a walkable connected street network. Opportunities will be explored for reuse and rehabilitation of existing structures for housing. 
So that's the South Deerfield area. And this is the assess the accessibility the accessory apartments are well not yeah, but that or just two families or there was a whole assortment of stuff that was you right, know. but you're right. I don't think I included. But they're in that. They're in that. I sort of read yeah. between the lines. Yeah, and I, I have I a can. question about those apartments. So that if the zoning is changed mm -hmm. and there's more leeway for a homeowner <clears throat> uh, to to um, age in place in the mm -hmm. home they own while creating an income apartment um, that they can rent, and it wouldn't cost so much. How does it get counted or not counted as affordable housing? That's a good question, and I don't think I addressed it in when I talk about accessory apartments later, um, and I probably should. Um, it'd be better if MJ was still here because she knows the real details about it. But, yes, it, it, the, the, the property owner, the homeowner who's creating the accessory apartment would have to follow the guidelines presented by the state, so there would have to be an affordability restriction on the accessory unit, um, so that they would they would they would have to rent to um, an income eligible renter, um, and that they would have to be uh, when they when the apartment becomes available, they'd have to do a fair marketing uh, of the apartment unit. So. It is a little tricky because if you're a homeowner and you really just want to rent to your family or or you really want to have contr you know ultimate control over who lives in that apartment um you may not want to go the route of making you it can't. an official right. affordable unit because right. you really do have to have that open process and and everything well the other thing that that's still i it's it's been hazy right from the beginning for me is do these um apartments and new things that are created follow the the zoning and i mean the uh the the bylaws and the stuff of the of the area that we have now the building codes or are there additional codes that they assume you're going to do such as put solar panels up or or do other things like that because most of the most of the examples you've shown us have been ones where they they tried to do solar mm -hmm. or something in addition that was to the just, building. Yeah, that was just the preference of the developer or the you know whoever was doing the project. Or like RDI and so on. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, but there's no extra there's no extra stipulations on the building codes other than what the town follows already. Is that correct? Well, no, it's not completely legal right now to do that. Right, because of the zoning, because but the zoning. we're talking about That's changing. Oh no, no, no! The zoning, the zoning is okay. Oh, okay. But in other words, are there building codes? Are there the building, building codes you have, that to, we follow. have to follow in addition to what the town does. Not in addition. They do actually, though. They do. Um, I can't remember if accessory apartments um, have any stipulations um, in terms of it being uh, an affordable unit. They do have square footage requirements for some of the. Square footage. Yeah, so the unit, I think it might be like 700 or 800 square feet right. minimum um, that the state would require for that, that unit to qualify, uh, as we, well, you know, as long as it meets all the other requirements, too. So there are some things like that, but it's not, and it's, yeah, it's not going, like, it's not be, being more restrictive than the building code. Not outside really. the envelope, either. It's not uh, solar panels or anything like that. No, no, it wouldn't require anything like that. Um, okay. But it, well, and the and the other thing too is that um, how does it how does it um, get determined if it's senior housing or if it's um, you know just um, affordable that, housing? You know what I mean? There's yeah, two different categories. That's here. another restriction. You build an apartment, and there's going to be ADA kind of stuff, I guess. For for uh, well, for senior for senior housing, how we've defined it as we've gone on um, as, as we've worked on this plan was. It, it's another restriction on on the property that the second one you mean yeah in addition to the affordability restriction that would um, restrict the occupancy to someone we've used age 55 or older but uh, technically I think that could be you know the age could vary depending mm -hmm. on what the the person wanted to set but that's all you know that's the property owner deciding to do those things and deciding to place those restrictions um, or the town, if the town wants to take on. We did the housing in Waitley, right mm -hmm. across from the Waitley Inn. Right, yes. And that was, it's a simple two family, but it's senior mm -hmm. housing, and there's certain, you know, guidelines to, you know, for you to enter that, that building. Right. 
but I was, I guess I was thinking in terms of accessory apartments, it's likely a, oh, a yeah, private accessory. homeowner. Yeah, 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 but yeah. right, that's, that's the other option is for town-owned property, the town can decide to um, include affordable units if they're, you know, developing something. I know that we discussed, we had a public hearing about the, uh, the, I call them in-law apartments. <laughs> of course, <laughs> yes. of course. And uh, uh, I think it was 800 feet as far as footage goes. That mm -hmm. yeah. We did have a public hearing on right. that. Yeah, and actually, I remember, I can go back and look. There, um, it's, um, there's specific guidelines for, for units created this way. It's called the Local Initiative Program. So it's when, um, it's when affordable units are being created through the zoning or through an initiative of the town. Um, they have, the state has guidelines that you, um, that help, basically help show how to get those units counted on this, on the subsidized housing inventory. And so that includes more information about like the square footage requirements and things like that. So I can go back and review those and just try to add any of that information. Um, now in, in, in the terminology you're using now, um, when you start saying subsidized housing, then you've moved beyond the affordable housing well, to some extent. I mean, that's how, just what they call, that's what they call the list that they um, keep count of your number of affordable units in your town. Um, and the t uh, affordable units can be subsidized in a whole wide variety of ways. Um, the word subsidy, it doesn't have to be from the government. It doesn't, it can be, it, it's just, I guess what it, it means is that it's, it's kept affordable um, by the See, restrictions. I, when, you, so. when you say affordable, that I think you can, you can define and people will probably understand that. But, but when you start going into the word subsidy mm -hmm. and that kind of thing, now you're getting into things that people think of as Section 8 and different things like that. Right. So it's, it's difficult. I mean, is that, is it, could it be Section 8 housing? Well, yes, it could be. But, but that's, that's up, you know. It's kind of a red flag to most well, of the Section people. Eight housing, well, Section 8 is normally vouchers. So normally, sec, like Section 8, there's um, um, vouchers that go with the the person mm -hmm. and so those you, you, they can rent anything you know um rent any kind of unit um but then i know there are section eight units that are um it's it's with the unit and those are normally under the authority of a housing authority mm -hmm. um and so if the housing authority which we don't have right which you have the regional housing authority so if you if the town wanted to work with the regional housing authority on a project, it may be that um, the units created might be subsidized through Section 8. Okay. Uh, you know what I mean? But, and the more light, as thinking that a more likely source of a subsidy for affordable housing in Deerfield are the large nonprofits that we have mm -hmm. in town who cannot, whose people who work there cannot afford to live in town. And yes. So for them to build housing um, for um, their employees. Right. Yeah, subsidies but somehow, in many forms. But somehow when this is presented to the townspeople, it, it's, and it's affordable housing, the way I initially saw this thing working out is that people would upgrade their, their apartments to meet this and then put a deed restriction on to cover it. But then if you start getting into a thing where um, a Section 8 could be used in one of these apartments here, and then all of a sudden the landlord now has to meet um, ongoing mm -hmm. things from the, the Section 8 type stuff, that's going to scare a lot of people off, I can tell you that right now. That's by choice. Yeah. You're making that decision. Yeah, no one's making that decision to. for you. No one you. would have to do You're that. You're making that. The problem is, and I think one of the reasons why we're here, is that developers can come in now mm -hmm. and they can, by virtue of the fact that we don't have enough affordable housing. Oh, I understand that yeah, fully, yeah, okay. then. yeah. But, but maybe you sure. can explain what you said. I didn't quite follow what you're saying about the landlord's choice for what. No, no, you have a choice what you do in your buildings. So you can choose if you want to have subsidized housing or not. I don't think so. Once oh, you yeah. sign that form, can you, can you discriminate between one group and another? 
Well, no, but How I mean, as that? a you can't discriminate no matter what. I mean, unless you're, I think, like, uh, I mean, you can't discriminate as a landlord no matter what. It's mm-hmm. against the law. <laughs> oh, absolutely. So you can't necessarily say no to someone who has a Section 8 voucher. But my, but my point even is... Even if your unit isn't an affordable unit. Right? I mean, I, I don't know. I, no, if somebody, puts a, if somebody the, puts a restriction on a deed that says I'm, I'm for affordable housing, mm-hmm. and they're thinking, okay, this is the guy who's the police officer here in town who can't afford to live here because it rents too high, mm-hmm. and so it's going to either be subsidized or just by the, the, the virtue of the way that the person that owns the property sets it up, they agree to take a lesser amount of rent for right. other, other, uh, other right. returns. Right. But then all of a sudden, if that turns into something other than that, how does the landlord then... Well, that's your question. Deal with it. Does it turn into anything other than that? That's right. That's my that's question. That's your question. Well, no. It doesn't I mean... morph into anything else. <laughs> no. But they <laughs> right. would have the opportunity to rent. And you would have to decide if you are going to accept them if you have no mm-hmm. other. Yeah, and it would have to just be a, a, a fair um, marketing of the, the rental unit. So you just have to publicize it, like in in regular kind of avenues of publicizing the unit, and then whoever you rent to has to meet the income guidelines. And yes, sometimes people use Section 8 vouchers, the mobile ones that right. go with people, to and rent an affordable unit because it, it makes it even more affordable for them, and that's how they find affordable housing. But that's, that's just one person looking for housing just right. like anyone and, else. And those can be gainfully employed people at, right. at, yeah. at, the, at the schools <clears throat> and so forth. Well, the thing that we the have thing a big that, need to yeah. house, we have institutions in this town. See, I'm coming at it from a different standpoint than a lot of you are. That we're, as the planning board, are going to end up having to try to sell this to the public. Right. And when you hear their objections, you got to say, now wait a minute, are we telling them the right thing? Are we giving mm-hmm. them the, the the pros and cons and the worst case scenarios, or are we giving them right. giving misinforming them? Right. Because all we talk about and all we have talked about is the is the uh, middle, lower middle income people that are needing affordable housing. Mm-hmm. We're not calling this subsidized housing in any way. So we need to make sure that we define it correctly and that we let people know that this is called affordable housing, but it could just as easily be low income housing, I apparently. Think it's different. I understand what you're saying. But how do you define it? That's the thing, Bernie. I think you define it. If you're bringing in a housing subdivision and you have to, by law, make 10% of your housing affordable, mm-hmm. now, then you, also, you can also set up subsidized housing, I think. I mean, I, well, I, I get, your question the, is the good. Whole, I understand the whole where you're going, and I actually am and not 100% clear. And you look to Cog to guide you. you, you what the news tonight is that he's asking for that to be extremely clear right. for him yeah. to take back well, to the planning board. Question. Oh, yeah, because that's so going to cut. So and that's, we're going to be we, just, we can move on. We will discuss it. Yeah, but but I, I'm just trying to I'm just trying I to think, find. I think it. I think you're right though. The the word subsidy in, it, it's kind of loaded, and and what would be helpful is just to get across the idea that in general, um, affordable units may need to be subsidized in some way because because you're losing some amount of um, revenue. So if you're a developer and you're developing... Uh, that's a key. So, so it could be, it could be anything. From. It could be that's bake sales. Key. It could be, it could be you know, the, the way to raise the extra money you need to develop those, those units. Um, the subsidy could be so many different things. If you're it could be a density bonus. From the state, mm-hmm. then you have to provide subsidized housing or affordable housing. If you are paying market rate, if you're paying taxes, you're free to do what you want. But this tax situation, if you're looking for a write-off, that pushes you into a different arena. <coughs> that's mm-hmm. what's going on. And it's all voluntary. Well, that, that's okay, and I understand that. But, um, but for some reason, this is called affordable housing, not um, subsidized housing. Mm-hmm. And, and that's a big distinction that I'm hearing from people. Mm-hmm. That are, are there. I'd so we just need to. We just. We just. I will make sure. We've got to. We've got to somehow define what we're doing right. here, and either call it low-income subsidized housing potentially, or not. And if we're going to call it that, then it's going to be a hard sell. So that's all I'm saying. Is that, okay. Is that so we can't. Will, we can't, as the planning board, go out and tell everybody it's a rosy thing, and that's all this. Right. And then all of a sudden, somebody does it and says, "Wait a minute, I didn't know I was going to be subject to." 
uh, Section 8 and having them coming and looking over my shoulder 24-7, 365. And that's what Section 8 does. So, um, okay. you know, it's, okay. it's and, and, the, and I do understand that the Section 8 goes with the tenant, not with the own the property. So it may not have to be Section 8. But if, if signing on to affordable housing means that you're then going to be also signing on to low-income housing mm -hmm. that's not within what we're being told now, they need to know that up front. Okay. Okay, and that's will, all I'm saying. I will figure out a way to present what we're talking about okay. and what it could be and what it, yeah. whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and I have good information on, on where subsidies can come from and you can see what, yeah. it, it's subsidy with a big S and subsidy with a little S. Almost, okay, so. well I'm just saying you gotta, it, it's, yeah. it's <laughs> knowing what people are gonna start coming up with at an open meeting and saying to us at the planning board. No, 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 it's important to be really clear. Yeah, you have yeah. to I agree. be. You gotta have, have all, your, be. all your eggs in one basket. Yes, indeed. So, um, so I've been telling people that, that said to me, you know, well, this is going to be just another low income project. And I'm saying, no, it's not. It's not designed to be that. But, yes, but then when you start hearing subsidy well, words no, coming in, then all of a sudden I'm income, going to sound like I don't know what the heck I'm talking when, about. And I mean, it could be a range. And, and that's the other thing is looking at the need, um, you know, what, what ranges of, of incomes are in need of affordable housing. Um, the the threshold is 80 percent of the area median income a household making up to that amount in order for your unit to qualify um but you could go lower too and there we documented in the plan that there is a need for some homes that would be below that level especially for seniors um and for young people who are just starting out in work you know um so it's not it's it's low to, to moderate income um, and it can vary with each project, depending on what the developer or what the property owner wants to do. Okay. Um, so the second paragraph of targeting new housing development um, is targeted mixed-use development on routes 5 and 10 through infill and adaptive reuse of existing structures will provide new housing opportunities while avoiding commercial strip development along the route. In the rural areas of town, new subdivision should be in the form of conservation subdivision to preserve important resources while allowing construction of new housing. Um, Co-housing, a condominium development where homes are clustered together to create a community feel is an alternative housing type that may also be appropriate in the rural areas of town. In all areas of town, um, this is where the accessory apartments come in, um, accessory apartments will be supported and encouraged, particularly as a way for senior householders to remain in their homes. Um, does that encompass cool. everything? Seems fine. Okay. So then on page 81, um, that's the housing production goal. Um, this, this section starts off with an explanation of how that goal is arrived at. Um, by the state and basically your your goal is based on the total amount of housing units in town so I'll just read it for Deerfield to receive a one-year certification of compliance with its housing production plan 11 affordable housing units must be created in town within one calendar year to receive a two-year certification 22 units of affordable housing units must be created in town within one calendar year Deerfield will strive to meet these goals through the strategies outlined in this housing production plan. Um, 22 units in one year? Yeah, so how this works is the 11 unit number, that's 0.5% uh, of your current total housing unit count. So if 11 affordable units were, were created um, within one calendar year, so that I, I believe, actually I have to check if that means starting January to December, if it could start I okay, think it's whatever. at any time, yeah. um, then you would be certified compliant and starting roughly when that 11th unit is, uh, you know, considered uh, affordable, um, you would have a one-year period of certification where if, if a developer proposed a 40B development and the town didn't like it, uh, you could uh, um, say no and you would be covered. Um, and then if you if 22 units were to be created within one calendar year, um, you would get a two-year certification. 
That means you're, you're just good for the second year. So you're good for yeah, two okay. years out okay. instead of mm -hmm. one year out. Mm -hmm. Okay, so a question, a big question we don't know is whether or not these uh, accessory apartments, in-law apartments, are available or are considered as affordable, right? Well, so the... the Just to go back a paragraph. Oh, well, n I don't believe any... I don't know how many accessory apartments are in town currently, but I... No, no, I'm saying in the future now. Oh, we're, we're yes. Looking, you know, I mean, are we going to look into the possibility of considering these accessory apartments as affordable and we can count them off our 11? If, if, the, if the property owner who's creating the accessory apartment decides to make them affordable under the requirements of the state, mm -hmm. then yes, they could be counted. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something that um, I know I have to provide The frustrating thing about it, Byrne, is that... Anybody who has an apartment that's affordable now, mm -hmm. it can't be counted. They're not. They're not. They well, that's not true. Let's they have to go through some rigorous uh -huh. thing. Uh, and I. And it's not I necessarily not that it. rigorous. Um, I know I haven't given you all the information on it, but um, if we go through the implementation strategies, it does include some strategies for turning existing units into affordable units. Oh, okay. So good. we can go through that. Okay. Um, so go the ahead, the yeah. first. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Are we going to go through that now? Because yeah. I, okay. Because then I then I have a question about just to flag it mm -hmm. about um, say an aging couple, an aging family that are house rich but cash poor. Mm -hmm. Is there a way that that they could be the people in the in the small apartment that they they become the yes the people yes. who live in the accessory apartment and and get market rate for the the bigger part of the big old house. Um, yeah, I believe so. If they're in, if they're if they qualify, if they're income qualified for the affordable unit, which it, in this case is the accessory unit, um, that probably would work. Um, and that's sort of separate from the yeah, fact yeah, that they own cool. a house. So so yeah. that so that one but one I, physical building with two units, one can be market rate and one can yes. be affordable. Oh, that's right. absolutely. The okay, that's good. Yeah. Move, the, 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 that the elderly the person. Exactly. Yeah. Can move yeah. Into that, the small one. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Good. Nice. And I, the income. one thing I have oh, to check up. Have too much income. Yeah. The, <laughs> the one. Thing, that's true. That's true. That's, that's exactly. one caveat. And the we'll other thing that. is, um, mm -hmm. I would have to check on um, whether or not there's an uh, asset. Uh, yeah. Uh, threshold. Sometimes um, um, these types of I know programs that foc that focus on lower moderate income households. If you even if your income meets the guidelines, if you have assets above a certain amount, you may not qualify. So there's some details. State, I mean, they can set there's things to do. They, well, I don't know. I'm not it. sure. I just know from individual programs that I've been aware of, like home rehabilitation programs mm -hmm. and things like that. Yeah. You know, to qualify, your income has to be below a certain oh, no, amount. Oh, makes sense. Then, I understand. I'm you just know, you wondering can't have if it's over a county set basically. number, which might I'm make sure. sense. I mean, if you're going to compare Western Mass with a uh, Boston suburb, I oh, mean, no, these no, things no. could That's, be very different. So a statewide thing would be a, a threshold That's true. would be with sort the of asset, uh, not very fair. Yeah, with mm. the asset threshold, that probably is just across the board. The income guidelines are... Uh, regional. regional, yes. Yeah. Um, but I'll check into that. Excuse me. Can I can I just ask what you were saying? What when you went and had a meeting at the senior center on this topic? What were you hearing back from the people at the senior center? I don't get much feedback at all. It seems well, like they I, don't care. No, I, w I was there, and there was about thirty people at that meeting. No, but I mean, I mean, on, on oh, myself. Yeah. Oh, for yourself, yeah. yeah. Well, there was about thirty Come people at the meeting. Alone. And I think I heard four people speak, and two of them, um, I think, were le leaning towards having senior housing somewhere mm -hmm. that was designed to, for them to move out of their existing home into a senior housing mm -hmm. uh, thing. Then the two other, two. the two others wanted to do this accessory apartment, mm -hmm. and to to have that. And exactly what you're saying is what the other two people spoke to. So, we, so out of 30 people, four people spoke. Yeah. Yeah. Two wanted the accessory. <laughs> yep. Two people wanted the accessory apartments, yeah. basically, and two people wanted a senior housing project. We also, yeah, and, and I'm, I should have mentioned, too, that um, I don't think I specifically mentioned it in this section, but earlier in the plan there's information on a survey that the South County Senior Center did in 2011 
of all residents of Deerfield, Waitley, and Sunderland who are 55 and older. And so some of that information too was very helpful um, in terms of the senior housing. A lot of uh, seniors definitely seems like they want to stay in their home as long as possible, which you know is understandable. Um, but it's when the need to move comes that there's limited availability in the that lots region. Of people also don't want to move out of town. Right, and that was the other big town, thing was 96 percent. I think and I don't want to move exactly. out of town. Yeah, 96 percent. I think of the respondents mm -hmm. said they want to stay in this area, right. um, mm -hmm. but they're not sure what the housing options are for when they get to that point where they may need to move. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Um, now, uh, Lessa, just to just to yep. clarify something here, my the first time we met, I brought up this whole thing about the existing affordable mm -hmm. income housing, okay. and I was told that 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 was a a, uh, a major hurdle and impossible to do. No, it's not impossible. Not impossible. It's not. But next to impossible, and and we <laughs> no, never really we never really got the guidelines of how somebody could do this. We still mm -hmm. don't have any of that information which is well, what I, I have some of it here okay. it's some of it's right. written into the implementation okay. strategies and then I can um, make sure I bring with me next time the guidelines which is the local initiative program now but next time the last meeting but next time well, we'll the be in the planning board, board I can make meeting. sure I have that information okay. for the planning board <laughs> all right okay um, <laughs> <laughs> so and I did I, I, I hate did to be I hate to be a stick sticking no, one no, on that but, but I've been know, asking that right did, from the beginning I did some research into yep. what could what you could do to, to you know mm -hmm. get to that um, so the first section for implementation strategies are the zoning changes. Um, so the first one is accessory apartments. Um, so this sounds like one that maybe could be tackled sooner rather than later since there's a lot of support for it. Um, so the first uh, recommendation is to remove the restriction that the accessory apartment must be occupied by either the owner of the property, life tenant, or caregiver. And instead, it could just require that the owner of the property occupy either, either the accessory apartment or the primary residence. So you'd still have the homeowner there, um, but you're not you're not um, restricting the type of of tenant. It doesn't have to be someone who's there just to care for mm -hmm. the homeowner. Um, allow accessory apartments to be constructed as small detached structures on the same lot as a single family home. Um, Oh, that's a bit. That's oh. a bit tender. Do you mean that? It's the garage. Detached. It's an example. Yeah. So either like as at a apartment over in a garage, a detached garage is one example. Um, right now, it the bylaw only allows um, accessory apartments within the actual structure of the single family home. That's going to be a major hurdle for zoning. <clears throat> major. So you think that's not something? Why? What's, what's the issue? Well, because, I mean, then all of a sudden, they're gonna, people are going to come in for an A&R, and, they'll, and, the, and this, this 11 years has gone by. The accessory apartment has now um, gone out of the deed restriction, and people are going to come in, and they'll want to have the lot split and houses. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. And I, just, that's, I think that just begs for problems down the road. I'm not sure what how that is it well for instance limit? people there's a time limit there's 11 years on a on a rehab and uh, how many years 20 oh for the affordability restriction? yes it's fifth well the minimum requirements are 15 years for a re rehabilitated unit and 30 years for a new unit okay that's okay, different 30 thought, years okay yep. so 30 years for a new unit. but you new, can't I mean you 15 can't, for rehab you can't you can set you know you can set guidelines in terms of it it being in a separate structure, you can set guidelines on kind of the size, the square footage, um, right, how much but, space. But it here's takes what up happens, Alyssa. For instance, there's been people that have that have built a second house on their lot, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, it's not going. They're going to sell it. They want to. They want to subdivide the property. Then they come in, and then you have to you have to give them a special permit or whatever, or say no, you can't separate the properties. Mm -hmm. um, but and that was so, also a risk they took at the time of construction. Right, but right. Come on oh now. yeah, I mean, no. Let, let's be realistic about this. I've also built houses that have a second house on the lot, and I've had to do a deed restriction that says this will never be subdivided. You understand what you're doing, and this is the way it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it's in the right. deed. And also, you'd have to have enough. Yeah, no, no, lot I, I don't. I don't disagree with you, 
but I, I've seen the problems come up in, mm -hmm. in the planning board for A and R's when people come in with them. I understand. And, and, um, and there's one guy that got that got it here not too long ago, and I forget the guy's name, but um, you know he had he had frontage problems. He had he had all kinds of stuff, but it had been going on for 20 some years, so he felt like he had some special stuff, and <laughs> and for some reason those things tend to get really sticky. And, and did he win? Um, he I think he did eventually get it. Yeah. Well, I'll I'll check at the office with That's people who <laughs> are more knowledgeable than I am about mm -hmm. the nitty gritty of yeah. of how that could work and find out if there's a way to, you know, have and it I in can, your bylaw to make sure that. Yeah, that can happen. and I, I mean, if you're going to have sure. if you're going to have an attached garage with an apartment, or you're going to have mm -hmm. a house that's split up to make two apartments, mm -hmm. um, I think that could be done without a lot of problems. Right. I, I just see the sing, the separate the detached, the detached no, I'm surprised to see the as detached. A, yeah, I, I see that as a okay. I see that as a as a problem that you don't need to develop if we can get away without it. Okay, well I'll I'll check into that. Um, and we can take it out if it seems like it's gonna be too much of an issue. <laughs> um, no, no. Yeah. Um, it's tricky with uh, allow accessory apartments by right rather than by special permit. Um, the bylaw could stipulate design and parking requirements that would need to be met, um, but this would, you know, take away that um, special permit process to make it a little bit well, see, more typi straightforward. Well, see, typically, um, uh, you know, and again, this is something that I've just seen throughout the planning board stuff, is that um, people in residential stuff can do just about anything they want to their house without having special permits. If it's so... So that's not not been the case in, in Deerfield. In other words, Vern, you can tell us more. There were some people that, that added, that, that almost doubled the size of their house, yeah. and the neighbors complained, and there was nothing that could be done because they were, it was a residential project, you bet. and they can just do it. They can find mm -hmm. all the uh, zoning, the setbacks, and everything. Yeah, right. yeah. So, so, the, so the residential. But that's different than a sex, you know accessory apartment. That's, they were building a one family. Right. Well, and again, the bylaw would, you know, the zoning can still stipulate certain things that would need to be met. And if they're not meeting them, then they would have to get, you know, they'd have to go through a special permit process to get. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm unfamiliar with that, Vern. You're saying that if somebody has a second apartment, then all of a sudden it becomes more of a commercial type thing than residential? Well, it's more difficult with the zoning in the yeah. building. Right, but they, the party that you're referring to is just single-family home. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, that was just single-family home. But mm -hmm. uh, hmm. um, well, that's interesting. I'm just I'm just thinking of potential pitfalls that mm -hmm. if we can say, okay, take a house, split it in half, and do it, and you know, Dick does a lot more of the zoning. I mean, I, I don't really dabble in the zoning. So yeah, he'll know that stuff. Well, really again, the right. the current bylaw. I don't go into all the details here, but the current bylaw already stipulates like um, um, the the size that the apartment can be. It can't be more than, I think, 25% of the current, you know, mm -hmm. size of the house or something like that. You know, there's certain um, guidelines that you can still include mm -hmm. um, that would need to be followed to kind of avoid situations that you wouldn't want to see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then the other recommendation was to allow accessory apartments in the C2 district. Um, and this is mainly because there's a large part of the C2 district in uh, northeast Deerfield where the rail yard is, but it also encompasses um, uh, River Road and areas with single-family homes. And so the idea was to allow those people in those districts to also have the option of um, accessory apartments. Currently, they don't have that option Upper at all. River Road. Oh, yeah, I know. Up by, yeah. up by the, the Clonin Farm. Mm -hmm. Clonin Farm Above in that area. Yeah. 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 Um, so, and then I will, I will uh, do research into how to make accessory apartments affordable, and I can add some more information about that um, because that's missing. Um, the next one is two-family homes. <clears throat> um, the recommendation is to allow two-family homes by right in the residential agricultural district. Um, Consistent with the results of the community workshop, this change would allow for greater diversity of housing types in town. Um, currently, I believe they're allowed by special permit. Well, and they also have to have to meet frontage and, and lot size to make them two-family. Right. And in the RA district, 
that um, makes more sense because generally they're not on sewered properties. Um, the RA districts have their own sewers. I don't think there's anybody right, in RA septic. that doesn't. It's they have their own septic. Yeah. Right. So that's that's one reason to have a larger minimum lot size for a two family versus a single family because normally the septic system. I is think easier. overall, I think CVRD and RA have different re uh, size requirements. But anytime it's more than one unit, the the lot size requirement right. goes up and the frontage changes. Yeah, and that's actually the next bullet on 83 <laughs> addresses that in the CVRD. Mm -hmm which the recommendation is just to make the lot size um, for single family and two family homes the same um, so that you're not requiring a larger lot size and frontage for two family homes. Um, so you're saying that's not the case now, huh? Um, what's not the case? This right here. The CVDRD? Right. Yeah, that's, that was what the people complained about in that last zoning change was the fact that they yeah. – they didn't, nobody on, on North Main Street wanted to have two family houses mm -hmm. put in anywhere. Um, and I think the frontage, the frontage in a CVRD is 100 feet. Mm -hmm. And if you have a two family, it's 125 feet of frontage. And then the lot size changes a little bit. So it's a, there's a little bit of, of stuff there with that. Yeah. Um, I, I forget the exact lot sizes, but yeah, the lot size goes up. Well, it's half an acre in CVRD. And oh, it's, it's less than that. It's 100 square feet. Oh, the um, for two family? It's no, a for a single family. No, for a single family, it's about. Um, In CVRD. Yeah, it's. Um, oh, I have it with me. I thought it was. It's a lot I less than that. I thought it was that. 20. It was 22,000 square feet, and. Uh, no, for um, for single family in CVRD, it's 12,000 square feet. So that's a little over. Um, a quarter of a, a acre. And what's the frontage? Um, the frontage is 100. So you, yep. And then for two family, the minimum lot size is 1,500 square feet. So that's 3,000 3, square feet. You mean? 15,000, right? Um, so that's 3,000 more than the single family. Oh, okay. And the frontage is 125. Yeah, 125. Um. <clears throat> um okay, so. You think that may meet with some resistance? Well, it has. It has yeah. already. In see, we just changed. We just changed all the zoning on North Main Street from RA and industrial to CVRD, with mm -hmm. a couple of exceptions. Okay. And when we did that, all the public discussion was they were they were concerned about people having two family housing started there. Okay. And uh, that was a big big thing. All right. So. Um. So that's just a, that's just something that's going to come up. I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. Okay. So that's good to know. Um, so multifamily homes. So I know this is something that may or may not um, be popular. <laughs> um, so revise the definition of multifamily homes to allow more than three units within a structure. Um, so currently the definition is three units, no more than that, um, and that's the. M the maximum amount of, amount of units you can have in any structure, um, unless you're going to something like an, uh, a nursing home or um, assisted living facility. And so, did this change? I mean, you have housing on, on Mountain Road that's multifamily, more than three. Well, there's grandfathered things. Right. And I, as I, don't I understand. Know. And I always thought that three apartments was grandfathered as well. I didn't realize that you could split. I thought two was the maximum. Right. And that that there are existing three family ones, mm -hmm. um, but those were those were grandfathered ones, as far as I knew. Um, nope, it's I think it's all by special well, I know permit. You you, you, oh, you I read see. that out there, but I yep. I didn't. Uh, um, currently, multifamily is allowed by special permit in the CVRD and the C1 and the in the EPD. So that's all really. Uh, okay, so it's a special permit. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So Thank this, you. but this would allow. Um, it would still be special permit, but it would allow for greater flexibility, especially when um, we're talking about um, reusing some existing structures um, that would accommodate a lot more than just three units, or not a lot more, but more than three units. Um, currently, you, you wouldn't be able to do more than three under the existing zoning. Um. <clears throat> but it seems as though there's, there's apartment houses over on Graves and and well, those are pro those have probably been there that, for quite that some time. That are grandfathered, uh, you know, as multi. Yeah. 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 Right. 
Um, and then uh, the next one is to allow multifamily homes in the C2 district um, and the RA district by special permit. Um, the C2 district is to better facilitate some of that mixed use development um, and the RA district is just to allow that as an option. Um, Dwelling unit incidental to commercial or industrial use. Um, this is currently, um, this one is allowed in the commercial the, uh, district that's right here in the village, the C1 district and the C2 districts. Um, and it's allowing one, one um, housing unit with commercial uses. Um, if you allow more than one unit to be within a commercial structure, you open up the possibilities for actual mix, you know, more mixed use development where you could have um, apartments on the second floor of um, a commercial building. Um, and so that's what this is recommending. Um, and then to also allow this in the expedited permitting district, the, the Oxford site area, um, currently the zoning prohibits this type of de development within the EPD, um, but by allowing it, it would help facilitate the type of development that a lot of people identified that they'd like there, um, the mixed use development. <clears throat> now, just a question, do you know, have you, are you on the board, on the group that's talking about the Oxford property? Oh, okay, because I heard that they were just letting out, uh, they had a deadline here just recently for the yeah, the RF, right. yeah, the RFP went out last week, I think. Yeah, and I think the deadline's come and gone for the no. submittal. No, no, it's not yet. No, okay, no, no, that's no. what I, I was going to I think they're holding. Um, the advertisement went out, the invitation yeah. went out, but I don't okay. think we have a deadline yet. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> a conservation subdivision. Uh, to encourage conservation subdivision is the preferable approach to subdivision in the RA district require that conventional subdivisions go through a special permit process. Um, so this would just further incentivize doing a conservation subdivision um, and in increase the percentage of required open space. Um, that's not really, it's not exactly housing related, but it was something that came up. Um, so the next section is on in inclusionary zoning methods. So this is really where we get into the specifically creating affordable units. Um, affordable units could certainly be created um, with these other zoning um, mechanisms, but, but this is specifically you know, requiring affordable units. Um, so the first one is to incentivize or require affordable housing units in new subdivisions um, and there's a number of towns in Franklin County that have this within their zoning. Um, so when any new subdivision over a certain number of units, and you can decide how big the subdivision has to be before it, this kicked it, kicks in, a lot of times 10 housing units is used as a threshold, um, the developer would be required to provide 10% uh, of the total unit count as affordable. So one affordable unit for every 10 units that are built. Um, this could be required or you could also incentivize it by uh, providing density bonuses um, and things like that. The alternative is actually to require it but then provide density bonuses for going above and beyond that percentage that you set. Um, the next one is to adopt compact neighborhood zoning in the CVRD district. And so this is, we talked a little bit about this um, compact neighborhood zoning, which is, it's a tool that the state allows, you know, provides towns where if you adopt the, um, the zoning requirements to meet this kind of um, definition of compact neighborhood, then the town would, um, get preference on certain grant um, uh, grant programs um, and you'd also have, it would also go well in terms of uh, a negative 40B uh, proposal. You would have, the, the state would look favorably on it if you have this zoning passed. Um, so for CVRD, you would have to revise 
the minimum lot size requirements for single family and two family homes to be a quarter of an acre, um, which is roughly 10,890 square feet. So that's reducing it a little bit. Or you could identify an area of an area that would um, be more applicable and have an overlay district where you would make those the, the new um, dimensions. So you don't have to do it for the whole district. It's up to, it's up to you. Um, and under this zoning, at least 10% of housing units constructed within development of more than 12 units would be required to be affordable. So it's those bigger developments. Where's the picture? Yeah, I'm looking. So that's, I think this it's Mountain Road. Mountain Road. Yep. That's what I was wondering. It, yeah. it looks better in color. It doesn't say see. Mountain Road, but I think we saw it before. Yeah, I had and it. It was blown labeled up Mountain Road. Yeah. Um, and this is Sugarloaf Street right in front. Yeah. So it's just showing that this this type of um, this these lot sizes, the quarter acre, does exist already um, in parts of the village. So it's not you know incompatible with what's already there. Um, and then the last recommendation is to adopt an inclusionary zoning bylaw for all residential zoning districts. So this um, this would be more inclusive, I guess, but um, it would apply to any residential projects over a certain number of units um, and would re require a certain percentage of affordable units. Um, and again, the bylaw could provide incentives such as density bonuses for additional affordable units created. So those are some options. <clears throat> and then on the next page, the table just breaks down the different strategies by zoning district. Um, <laughs> I'm just trying to picture getting this through the board. <laughs> oh, I tell you. <laughs> Look at this. Well, again, if not, you know, you don't oh have to do goodness. all of these, but they're, you know, no, no, no. Listen, I'm, listen I, I think it's fantastic. I really do. <laughs> but I mean, when you, from our simple discussions, yeah. when you see it mapped out like this, mm -hmm. you realize it's what a, a quagmire this, this is. This is. I mean, oh, yeah. This is like huge. <laughs> Yeah, so, that, that's why. That's why I can't no, see. No, no. Now I understand yeah. what you were saying. Yeah. I didn't get it before, but I yeah. mean, this yeah. is yeah. to Just realize this one what little really, block really has mm -hmm. to go on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But again, like you said earlier, it's not doing this all at once. It's it's picking away at, at, oh, yeah. the, at especially <laughs> starting with you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, just just the um, just the RA will be the easiest one. The CVRD will be the next. Then get into commercial, and it's really going to be. But again, you find that the ones that are the most important, that can have the most impact, and you go after them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And also, I'm I sorry, it was just sort of an no, emotional okay. reaction. I had to see <laughs> this know. list. It's true, though. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I well, should note, too, um, my, my boss, Peggy Sloan, is um, reviewing this now, too. I haven't gotten her comments back, and she knows a lot about zoning, so there may be some tweaks and changes that she suggests. Well, this is exactly yeah, so. why um, we're going to require a lot of um, Pat Smith's time right. on doing this. And, and as I say, the money's not there. It, we, she see, told, she told us at the last special meeting that she was, she was um, working on fumes. Well one, thing, well, one thing, too, is that's, no that's DLTA no money, money, but there's yeah. also, um, you can use CPA money to do, thing, to do things like zoning changes. Um, so there are other funding sources. Yeah loads of CPA money yeah yeah but you have to you have to you have to specify what it's for too mm -hmm. and uh, and you might be able to do it with that I agree yes. yeah but that would but it's now is the time going into winter because that money then gets voted on at town meeting right. in, in spring so you have to meet with them through the winter a couple times and get the well this is going to be a tough one right. this is going to be a real should do that this is going to be a real tough one to get through for even April. I mean, I, I, mm. I know what it took us on other zoning changes mm. and uh, meeting once a month. Well, wait a minute. I mean, now in April, well, you're, I mean, you're going to be. You just, wouldn't you just be applying to the CBA for the money to work it out? You don't have to pr propose the answer, right? You're just saying that you're. You can't afford to keep well, well, I, I think, your expertise. I think I'm just stating the, the problem right now, and there's other people working on the, on the, on the, mm. the solutions, yep. and it won't be the planning board that do it. It'll be other boards that will, you know, selectmen or somebody will decide how to handle that. Well, I think, I think that's a good point. Um, 
So I want to look more into the, the CPA funding being used for technical mm -hmm. assistance on zoning. Yeah, that would be I'm, good if it's available. You yeah. I'm that. pretty you sure you that. can Yeah, use, that's fine. But you see, um, we, we went to annual meeting two years ago or three years ago, and we zoned a part of town, rezoned it, mm -hmm. and we got $10,000 for the year. Okay, mm -hmm. and then this year we had ten thousand, and then this other thing came up with uh, the uh, uh, different projects as well as the the marijuana one, and the money just evaporates. Right. And when you start when you start putting in that kind of time with technical support, that money just goes out the door. Right. Well, there well, need to be some. On that. Yeah. yeah. So I'll look more into that. Um, the next section the is there. Um, oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> The next section is identification of specific sites for affordable housing development. And this is another requirement under the state. We have to identify town-owned sites, and then we have to identify privately owned sites that the town would support the property owner developing um, affordable units. And when we talk about affordable housing development, um, ideally what we're talking about is not necessarily all affordable units, it, it, depending on the size of it, the preferable thing is still to have a mix of market rate and affordable, um, not necessarily all affordable. Um, so just keep that in, in mind, mm -hmm, too. Mm -hmm. um, so for town on sites, the Oxford site um, is obviously one of the sites identified, um, and that just kind of reiterates some of the preferences from the workshop and, and this, this um, planning process. Um, <clears throat> the other site that we had talked about is there's two town-owned parcels off of Brayburn Road um, that uh, look like they total just over six acres. Um, and so the issue with that is uh, currently Brayburn Road is very narrow, um, and so there would need to be another access to the site. Um, also, it, it looks like part of the site needs to be reserved for um, recreation use. Wow, swimming pool. Um, <laughs> and then, of course, you want to make sure that um, you work with the surrounding uh, neighbors um, because it would be kind of behind uh, existing homes. Um, so, I know one that won't go along with it. I know one that won't go along with it. Oh, dear. So any, but the location is, is it's a flat site. It's, it's you know, largely clear, um, and it's close to town. It's close to the senior center and the school. Um, so it's something to... How much of it is wetlands, isn't there? There is portion? a stream There's on one there. side, yeah. So not all of it would be developed. We found so. that out in mm -hmm. the work that we did on it. On yeah, the, yeah, that's what I remember hearing. Yep. Yeah. So... It's something it's more for to keep in mind for the future, especially if the opportunity came up to purchase um, if something came up for sale along North Main Street that would allow for access to the site mm -hmm. um, one of the blue houses yeah. so that's what I had for the main the town on the sites. Color next door um, the <laughs> so if there's anything I'm missing, let me know that you think of for privately owned um we talked about the St. James Church and Rectory, which is actually for sale right now. Um, the, one of the uh, interesting things about that site is there's actually a deed restriction that runs with the land that specifies any future use must be consistent with the mission of the Roman Catholic Church, um, right. which isn't necessarily, affordable housing isn't necessarily against that, or senior housing, whatever, so it's, it's one just... One of the few things it isn't. Yeah, it's just kind of interesting. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I wonder I how, that, they, how they'll accommodate birth control in the... Um, it won't be happening. <laughs> it won't be happening. But um, I know that um, the, the Regional Housing Authority um, had looked into this, and um, one, an, another constraint is that the reuse of the current structures may be challenging, especially for senior housing, um, because the rectory is two-story... Um, the church, too, is, you know, reusing a church for housing mm -hmm. could be challenging. Yeah. Not to be confused that there's no bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> um, we had talked about um, 23 Sugarloaf Street, um, which right now is a vacant lot, but I, I put this as an example of some of the smaller infill opportunities that um, are available just within the village center. Um, depending on what um, my boss thinks, we may... With the Chang. 
House was? Yeah. No, no, not 23 Sugarloaf. This is the rectory. That's not. No, no, the, no. no. 23, 23 Sugarloaf. Sugarloaf. Yeah. 23 Sugarloaf is the uh, no chain. the rectory from St. James. No, 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 that's on North that's Main North Street. Main. That's on North Main. Sorry, oh, the picture, I'm sorry. The picture I'm sorry. is picture the rectory. Oh, I get you. Misleading. I get you. Um, yeah, that's oh, that's the Chang property. Okay, yeah. Yep. So it's an infill. Okay. Yeah. So yep. it's just it's an example of of. Infill and it's a large. It's a large lot too. It is. Yep. Um, See that last sentence said, this is the reason I'm, I'm at these meetings. Mm -hmm. Which the, sentence? Any infill development along the street should complement its existing historic well, You're going to be in the design, design review board, don't you? There you go. There you go. <laughs> um, my job. The, so do you. It's your neighborhood. Now. That's my <laughs> neighborhood. <laughs> um, Even though 23 is a block away from 26. <laughs> Well, working on that, um, Isn't that something? Route they number the streets scenic independent of each other. With this, um, so this is across the street from uh, uh, um, um, Pachorix, who's is 50. Uh, interesting. I thought they fixed that up with the no. 911 no. numbering. No, they, they went up each side of the street separately and did one side odd, one side even. And the numbers, when you get up to 50, you got the church across the street that's 29 or whatever it is, you know. I didn't know that. So um, Hotel Warren um, came up quite a bit. Um, it's a historic building in the small business uh, Betsy district. was here. What did she have to say? I wasn't in her group at the workshop. Um, yeah, you were. I was? She sat with us. Yeah, we yeah, were all together. You, you no, you but are, you I think Megan, oh, Megan oh, oh, sorry, was Oh, sorry, sorry. You're right. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Well, were you in her group? Yes. Yeah. What, I was just wondering. I mean, she didn't say anything then. I didn't yeah. hear this well, as she, a possibility. She just, what she came to the, she, we invited her, mm -hmm. and she came, and within, she asked a question very early on, mm -hmm. um, and which she learned that um, the answer was, no, she doesn't provide affordable housing, you know, according <laughs> to guidelines. And, and I, I think <laughs> that deflated her a little, well, a little bit because Well, no, she, that's, see, that's, that's the thing that bothered me right in the beginning is that, you know, the apartments that I rent are all fall within these guidelines mm -hmm. for affordable housing, but because it's existing, you can't become affordable housing. It well, doesn't count. But you were saying there's some sort of, there's a, well, an avenue yeah, well, that's more difficult. We, um, they um, really sorry, discouraged, we're they really there. discouraged so it, yeah. What, what do you want in the way of outreach? Let me finish reading this. Outreach to determine interest. Yep. Um, I guess, so, right. So currently, she, I mean, currently she does obviously provide affordable affordable housing, um, which is good. Um, I guess, so let's see. Um, well, outreach, this outreach, if, 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 if I think that we're saying that Betsy should continue to be invited to the table, mm -hmm. and if this is all a new thought for her, you know, this, yeah. you know to think about think about the future of the property that she owns. Yeah, and, and to I, be involved in conversations about what's possible now and in the future. Yeah, and so I think what um, it, what will help too is there's recommendations coming up about building local capacity to actually implement this plan. Mm -hmm. But whoever moves forward with working on these things, um, right, should, should be um, like what you just said, inviting just, her to the table and and especially and with happy. CPA funds she was available. She's grateful and happy to be. Yeah, year, which and with she never with was. the CPA funds available, you can use you can use you can combine his, the historic preservation um, with affor creating affordable units. So this is an example where you can definitely take an existing structure that has existing housing in it. The the caveat is it, to make it affordable under the definitions of the state is you would have to follow the guidelines, and yeah. so there would probably be changes to the units. I'm not sure if they um, have guidelines for the single room occupancy or not. There, I can look this into town? that. I well, no, the state in terms of creating affordable units. Um, well, the, they've done but, this in Northampton. So yeah, we so it seems like them. there's some, you know, there may be ways to do it. And we built them in Florence, right so, around the corner from Miss Florence Diner. Yeah, and those must be qualified as affordable oh, units. Oh, indeed. So, that was SRO um, for sure. SRO and recently done under this all this with with community preservation funds. Do you think? There wasn't. Let's say maybe eight, ten years ago. Oh, Not that recently. That. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, but that would just be a great property. I mean, it's just such a beautiful building right in 
on could Elm be. Street. Could so. be beautiful. Uh, the hotel in well, Warren. Huh? Yeah. So. It was. It was. And it could, it you know, sure. serve multiple purposes of, of kind of being a, a very, um, very visual project that's like, you know, everyone would see it happening and seeing okay, the building course, being revitalized. So. Well, consider the alternative, which is that it would be raised because it's mm -hmm. in, in such poor condition, which is what happened to all the other historic buildings. Mm -hmm. It's the last mm -hmm. historic building except for the grammar school standing. Mm -hmm. The rest are gone. So it's a you choice. You mean the senior center? The Redmond yeah. Hall? Redmond that's Hall gone. is that's gone. gone. Yeah. The, 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 no, but the building it? that's existing is the is that the senior center building? Yeah, that's yeah. Called, yeah, yeah okay. All right. yeah. Which oh, is very right. threatened. It's right. extremely yeah. threatened. Mm -hmm. You know, and 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 that could come down. And if hotel hotel or the hotel comes Depends down. Depends on what the signs fix really, or not. <laughs> there's really nothing but but pictures to look at of what mm -hmm. used to be. Oh sure. And there's yeah. the beautiful pictures of the general store where Cumberland Farms is. Mm -hmm. And 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 soon there won't be people who remember these things and mm -hmm. and so these are choices, these are decisions and choices to be made. Sure. Mm -hmm. We had members of the two members of the historical society come to the senior center and show different did you like that? Yes. That was me. I did that. <laughs> I did that. Yes. I did that. It, we, we looked at slides. We just looked at lots of old pictures. Um, yeah. And, and yeah, I, that's enough. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, 247 Greenfield Road um, on Routes 5 and 10. That's the one oh. with the little windmill out front. Yep, oh, yeah. yep. That, that used one's to actually be a roller skating rink. Really? really? I didn't know so that. So the the, the lighthouse. This is the lighthouse. Yes. lighthouse. Yeah, the lighthouse. Well, lighthouse Douglas Galleries used to be a skating rink, a, a roller skating wow. rink. Wow. So the it's currently for sale actually, and um, this one. Yeah. It says it was served. It served. It served as a restaurant, real estate office, and antique store. Yeah. Probably more recently. All those things. Um, yeah. and this had come up in the public workshops as you know a potential. Um. Uh, definitely should be. Should be. Um, it had been suggested as an assisted living facility, um, but probably not big enough for that, though. Well, the the lot is large. Um, all right, plenty of room on the lot. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah so you just way. raise this yeah. building and build a new yeah. one. Or yeah. not? Or add on? Or I don't even know. <laughs> I'm not the expert on it, but um, one of the issues is it's, it's served only by public water um, and relies on septic, so that would constrain the amount of space. Ground that you can use. use. Space. Um, so those were the privately owned sites. Were there any others that we should include? No, that's very good. I'm yeah, very glad. Is. I'm very mm -hmm. glad that. Who else is going to see this this shorter version that we have? Did you bring? No, this is an addition to this the. Is, well, this yeah. is yeah. It, this is your. But you know, I'm going. No, to this is not synthesized. This is the actual document. Yeah, this is sections four and five. See, there's another package that you don't it's, have there that goes in, in front this of it. Is, right here, this, this, this one. This, yeah. this right. is not any different than that. No, 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 it's no. different. This is addition to, to that. This is eighty on. Oh, sorry. So the, that's what's yeah, going on. It's the an plan add itself will be quite long, but I do want to create. A, like an executive summary that would be really easy for someone to right. grab. Do you and have read. more copies of this tonight? Did you bring more? Um, yes, I do. More? I'd like to give one to Betsy, for example. Yes. So there's one, and I just have to How staple the other you? one. What? <laughs> just checking. What's that? I'm, I'm your you historic building. Often. I'm the historic building lady on the street. Uh, that's how you down. go drinking. I, I wonder about that. <laughs> I have, but I have stepped inside. I will say uh, I have stepped inside. I've spent um, a lot of hours inside. There you go. There you go. And when I present, when 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 we present this to the planning board and the board of selectmen, it will largely be the, the kind of goals and implementation yeah, strategies, and not going over everything else that we've gone over before. Okay. Great. Yeah, Good. You get into a lot. Um, so the next the next section is um, strategies strategies to build local capacity for affordable and community housing development. Community housing is added there. Um, it could be taken out if it just confuses things more. But that's because if you're using CPA money, you can um, uh, use it for housing that is. Uh, affordable for households earning up to 100% of the area median income, and they define that as community housing. Um, and a lot of these strategies that we're talking about um, could potentially use CPA funds. 
Um, so we've talked about how. Yes, identify and appoint a housing representative <laughs> to the CPC. We said that loud and clear. Um, right. So the, the Community Preservation Committee currently doesn't have a, a housing representative. Um, um, there's a vacancy. One thing that I thought was interesting is on the website it says the Franklin Regional Housing and Redevelopment Authority, the HRA, is the appointing authority. Um, so I actually wanted to check in with MJ about that. Um, but HRA staff can't sit on the committee unless they live in town. Um, right. So uh, work needs to be done basically to, they need to you know, work with the town to try to identify some potential candidates who could serve as, as that capacity. Um, <clears throat> the next one on page 89 um, is a municipal affordable housing trust. Um, so this is something that uh, towns across the state have um, created or established. There's a law that um, was passed in 2005 that simplifies the process of establishing um, this type of trust fund. Um, and it sets guidelines. Um, and I actually brought, this is actually outdated now, but this is online. The Massachusetts Housing Partnership has a whole guidebook on, um, it goes through assessing whether or not your town should pursue creating a, a, a trust um, to how to go about it, um, what kind of powers you can give your, um, your board of trustees, et cetera. Um, so it's a really good it's a really good resource. There's some notes in there from a, a workshop, but um, basically, basically you can use CPA funds as well as other funds to um, to capitalize the trust. Um, and the benefit of having an affordable housing trust is that um, if you allow them to through their bylaw, um, they can use their funds um, when they need to, so they don't have to go to town meeting and request funds from the CPC, from the CPC, um, for a project. So especially if it's, you're talking about real estate and things like that, um, this allows a lot more flexibility to actually use the funds when the opportunities are presented to them. Um, <clears throat> and also, the role of the trust can be different for different towns. Um, some affordable housing trusts act more as a funding entity, um, so they provide grants or loans um, to subsidize affordable housing development um, or for housing programs, um, which we're going to talk about some potential housing programs that you might think about in the future. But also, they can be more directly involved, so they can actually be purchasing proper property, um, fixing up homes, reselling homes, things like that. Um, and that does require a majority vote at town meeting to establish a housing trust. So that's something that would need some, um, you know, some work to build up public support, make sure people know what they're, they're voting on. Um, the next one is professional staff. And this gets to, to um, Paul, your comment about, you know, the zoning changes and everything. Um, the first is consider creating a part-time housing coordinator position in town. Um, so this would ha be someone who um, has a lot of knowledge about all of these things we've been talking about, uh, more knowledge than me, um, and who could really help with, with implementing some of these things. But they would need to be working with some other entity. Um, so like if a housing trust was created, the coordinator could work with the housing trust, with the community preservation committee, with the regional housing authority and other entities to kind of work on this plan. Um, CPA funds could be used to help fund a housing coordinator position. Um, I think with that though it gets a little tricky because I think then their activities would be you know maybe a little more constrained and have to follow the guidelines of the CPA. Um, I'm not exactly Sure. I've just heard that sometimes it can. I'm not even sure we have a functioning CPC in this town anyway <laughs> for this next round. So, I mean, this is a nice idea. It's good to have it written down. Yeah. So, anyways, um, that would be something to look into further. And there's uh, a lot of. I brought actually an example of a scope of services of a housing specialist. There's a lot of towns going this route, and th so there's examples out there of um, job descriptions and things like that of housing right. coordinators. So. If, if this did come, become something you're interested in, there's resources out there. 
Um, the other one is consider creating a part-time or full-time town planner position. And this, again, gets to what Paul was talking about. Um, town planner would be someone who could um, provide technical assistance to the planning board, but also work on a variety of town um, initiatives. And you said money was no object. Yes, money, <laughs> money appears to um, be flowing like water. So those are... At least to the ambulance. Capacity noise. building. <laughs> One thing I didn't put, which I could get your um, feedback on, is to create a housing committee, which would be a much simpler process. But I heard in the beginning of this process that a new committee wasn't really desired. But um, I don't know. I guess I'm wondering what your thoughts are on having almost like a continuation of some of you who have been working on this process um, having a new committee formed, a housing committee in town. Um. I think this thing's going to run out of gas. I do too. <laughs> I, I can there see this. somebody there mm -hmm. yeah. kind of keeping the band going. That's my concern. Okay. And is the best way to continue it to have a committee? I guess that's what I'm wondering because I think now, now I'm realizing, you know, having staff and everything, that's great, but it's not a short-term solution to keeping mm. this going. Uh, I think it's going to take some discussion for this. I don't think it's going to be an easy answer. Okay. And the town's in such transition, you know, with getting a new administrator and yeah. jobs being redefined. Mm -hmm. that as well, long as potentially re jobs being, being redefined. redefined. Mm -hmm. Well, as long as... <laughs> Yeah, but as long as this material that you're preparing, you know, gets into the, you know, the office, mm -hmm. then it should be in the mix as they're thinking about okay. the town's future. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think that's the best we can hope for, because we can't go for a new committee at this point. With all this. I would think that would be difficult. Okay. Well, I just wanted to check, because <laughs> that is one option. Um, so the next section, Paul, strategies for investing in the existing housing and building stock for affordable housing development. Um, the first one, home rehabilitation loans and grants. Uh, the HRA currently has a housing rehabilitation loan program um, that they administer in Deerfield, um, but there hasn't been a lot of interest or participation from Deerfield Homeowners. So there's money available, yes. and people are not taking advantage of it. That's my understanding. So hmm. one would have to ask if people <laughs> really are aware of this. Right. Right. So that's my main thing is working with the HRA on, on targeted outreach to provide more information to residents who may benefit from the program. Absolutely. Um, and I also wanted to check with MJ. Uh, well, also, the, in, on a lesser note from the same thing, yep. if, you, if you go to the... Um, uh, what do they call that? The, the, they come in and, and check your home. Oh, the energy? energy. Yeah, the, the energy audit, audit will come yeah. in and spend mm -hmm. quite a bit of money on, on people's houses. Um, and then if you're over 65, they'll pay the whole bill Okay. through the, uh, through the uh, Franklin County Home Care, I believe it is, that pays cool. the... So have. there's a lot of that money available that... But maybe that's what people think the money is, and they don't, don't know. they're not aware of this. Because yeah, I guess, and this maybe. is, I mean, this isn't, um, it's a, a zero interest loan, um, and it's deferred payment. So you don't have to pay uh, any of it until you sell your home. Right. Um, and it's largely for code-related issues, which could be a lot of things. Um, but I think there are some amounts of weatherization that you could do. Um, so the next one is to... Do you know how much, sorry to interrupt, mm -hmm. do you know how much money is available? Here? No, I don't. And I don't know if it's still available. But I know this weatherization and all that you can get for nothing, uh, as I say, through this other program. Yeah, so I, that may be part of it too. It may be that 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 money is the money. Yeah, then there's no restriction on that. You just mm -hmm. it's just automatic. You know? Right. Well, the mass. I know like mass saves and there's all. Yeah, mass through, save. That's what that's one of right. Right. And that's um, I actually had something about that later on. Um, so it, when we get to that, if I don't have everything okay. there, um, the uh, so the the next option would be to an, establish a home home repair small grant program um, for income eligible households. Um, so this would be a town program. You could um, 
you could contract with the HRA to um, administer it, to kind of, you know, be the staff for it. Um, but this could provide small grants um, to homeowners. HRA. Regional Housing Authority would be R H A. It's just I don't know why. It's just the but what HRA they use. Housing Regional Housing and yes. Redevelopment Authority. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Um, okay. um, so in exchange for receiving a grant, the homeowner would agree to place an place an affordable deed restriction on their property um, for at least fifteen years, which is that minimum amount. Um, and. Um, so then this then this just says that if if I take my home and I meet the guidelines and I want to I want to get it totally upgraded to to meet code stuff mm -hmm. that um, if I put a deed restriction for 15 years then I would be counted as a affordable housing yeah yep and that what a, okay well that does kind of answer the question I asked initially too yeah and again there's the, the nice thing about working with the um, the housing authority to help administer some of these programs is there's the kind of um, they can help with um, monitoring the affordable units so if it um, goes up for sale they can help with the fair marketing of it um, and they can also make sure that the unit gets on the state's list so that's the other thing is you can be creating affordable units but someone needs to kind of be out there making sure those units are getting counted um, so that's why having either staff or there's got to be someone who's like okay. watching over all. I think of you this. should volunteer for this position. Um, <laughs> I think you'd do good at it. Good so, um, and the other thing is to I, I noted in or, or grant. I noted in this one, but for a lot of these things, consult, you can consult with the Department of Housing and Community Development. Um, you can always call them up and. And they'll often provide a certain amount of assistance for free to towns to help with setting up some of these programs to make sure you're doing it in a way that will get those units counted. Um, so the next uh, program would be first time home buyer assistance. And this could be funded through CPA um, and provide financial assistance to income eligible first time home buyers to cover down payment and closing costs. They would need to agree to put a deed restriction on their home um, that they're buying. Um, and and I said, you know, it should also, the program could require applicants to complete a first time home buyer course, which are available for um, not a lot of money through the um, Housing Authority or Valley Community also, Development. Also, Alyssa, the bullet ahead about the small, the home repair small yes. grant program. There are towns that use CPA funding for that for external repairs. External to keep up the appearance. Oh, nice. Yeah, I was questioning that. I read. Um, not a yeah, not alone a grant program. Yeah, actually, it, I wasn't clear because I know CPA says you can use you can use CPA funds to um, to fix up uh, housing affordable housing that was created with CPA funds. So um, I wasn't sure if this would. Apply? I think it's wider. I think it's wider than that. Okay. And it may be easier in existing um, historic districts. Okay. You know, that once an historic Great district idea. has been made, which all the other villages mm -hmm. except Deerfield have, mm -hmm. um, then then the CPA can make a grant program as a pot, yep. and, and, and people actually apply, and they have criteria, and they divide it up. Right. Well, that's kind of like a facade improvement program. Right. Yes. yes, it is. Yes. That's what it and is. that could it's be. That would be his, using okay. the historic preservation. Um, so funding. CPA is not being used for any of this currently. No. 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 Awesome. Well, for housing, well, our CPA does. Just that nothing say, no, ho repaired. no housing, but they do other stuff. We've repaired some. The some, cemetery. The cemeteries and that, the that's, library. That's it. Right. And the library steps. Yeah. Um, not a lot. The money is growing and growing and growing. We just got this year <laughs> our match is one hundred seventy-one thousand dollars. Right. So what is this saying here? Saying co convert wow. existing privately owned housing to affordable units is phasing out or something. Where does it say that? Oh, Where are we? reserve CPA funding. What does that mean to assist properties? Okay. Where, well, where hang on. We're not quite. I'm on the. I'm right after the next st next topic. Well, the first before that is the um, a lot of like a lot so. Sorry, just to move back. Um, before I got into all these different programs, um, um, I said it's important to consult town council um, when with the use of CPA funds just to make sure that it. Yes, um, and they always do. And yes. and I think CPA could be used for a lot of these things. So um, if yeah. I don't specifically say that, um, 
Huh. It still could be, but I will check into what that. What was the expression you used? Facade? Yeah. Facade improvement. Right. Improvement. Facade yeah. improvement. Okay. A lot of towns um, have facade improvement programs for um, like downtowns. Greenfield has one. They fund it through their um, community development block grant program. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know with CPA, if you do facade improvement, it does require that um, um, historic preservation restriction, but if it's just on the outside, it's just for the outside. Yeah. Um, so, yep. Um, okay. <clears throat> so home preservation program, um, this is also called a buy down program. Um, <clears throat> and so this could also be funded through CPA. Um, however, I note it's going to require um, additional local capacity to implement um, because the premise is to purchase below market homes in need of repairs, re rehabilitate them, and then sell them to an income eligible buyer. So that's something that a housing trust could do. Um, you know, that's something that with more capacity you could do. Um, and you would put the deed restriction on and, and all of that. Um, preserve expiring use properties. These are properties um, that are currently um, considered affordable on the state list, but that may, uh, their affordability may lapse in the future. So 24 of the units, the Elm Circle units, um, they're due to lapse at the end of 2021. Um, <clears throat> and at which time the owners will have to decide whether they want to reapply for subsidies or convert the units into market rate rentals. Um, so the idea with this is to kind of just plan ahead um, and to see what interest lies with continuing that affordability. So those are privately owned? Yes. Privately owned, okay. Mm -hmm. Not by a group. Those are individually, well, privately owned? Um, according to the assessor's records, they're, 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 some of them are, some, some of them are under same ownership. Like there might be several units under one ownership, but it's not all under one. The back ones are individual, major. not, not. Oh, is that right? I believe yeah. so, yeah. The, the ones in the, the farther back, mm -hmm. the western end of it are, are not the ones in the front are I think under this program so that's eight years away in eight years they become available well they they may be be converted to market rate rental depending on what the owners, owners want to do with it go. but the C CPA funds could be used um, if the owners are interested and the town is interested in keeping them affordable um, the town could grant CPA funds to help keep them affordable um, <clears throat> And then the deed restriction program, which I think really gets at what, Paul, you've been talking about, mm -hmm. um, is to convert existing privately owned housing to affordable units. And this would be completely the choice of the, the owner, the homeowner. Um, CPA funds could be used um, to purchase the deed restrictions on privately owned homes where the current homeowner is income eligible. Um, so this would create a new affordable unit and reduce the assessed uh, value for the homeowner, so the taxes, the property taxes would go down a little. Um, and I provided a link to the town of Stowe because they've established um, a program like this. And I think they, I think they um, focus this mo more on senior households. Um, yeah, so you could do that. That's what I was Instead of just uh, having it necessarily be open to everyone, I think you could kind of target. Um, and then somebody said, I mean, I can understand. I mean, if, if somebody's 75 or 80 and they get a 15-year mm -hmm. deed restriction, what happens if they should die between the time they take it and... Well, and the restriction is on the property, so it right, stays right. on the property. Yeah. And that's... But, I mean, that was the question that somebody brought up at one of right. the meetings we were at, saying, well, now what happens? I mean, somebody's going to inherit that property with a deed restriction, oh, and right, then right. what happens? Well, it to, is. You know, it's... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's yeah, the yeah, but, I mean, it's, it's something... It's kind of like, you know, um, deciding whether you want to have a reverse mortgage or something. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. your, right. your, your heirs need to be involved in a decision well, yeah, yeah. to do right. it or not. If you're not. working with an attorney, that would be a good thing. That's to right. Ask. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the next section is strategies to mitigate. You have two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> We're actually pretty good because those are the bulk, and then the right. rest are kind of supporting strategies. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So mitigating development constraints in the target areas, the housing target areas. Um, so I noted on the, the target area on Routes 5 and 10, 
Um, I just noted to prioritize this area for extension of the sewer system. Definitely. Um, and then I added a few things about drinking water. Is that where the deal it goes to Pelican, right? No. No, it doesn't go to it Pelican. It doesn't go to Pelican. No. Oh, wait, wait, yes, it does go. I think it does go there. I'm right, sorry. but that's the, the end of it, isn't it? No, no, no. It goes all the way up to Dry Bridge. Oh, it yeah, does. It oh, goes, okay. Yeah, I actually did not. The few houses right up on 5 and 10 that I don't think have it that, that, that are close. Okay. This map shows it stopping at Jackson Road, the intersection with Jackson Road. I think they Not decided it actually the, goes up to the Dry Strassi. Bridge. Oh, okay. the, the, where the road goes up at the end of North Main? Yeah, where it goes over the railroad tracks. Yeah. Oh, that okay. Dry Jackson, Bridge. Is, there's a little street there called yeah. Jackson. Yeah. Okay. And everything on this side of the Did railroad tracks. Did you call tracks. it Dry Bridge? Dry. Dry, dry, bridge. dry bridge. Dry Bridge. Because there's no the water bridge. Dry bridge. The dry bridge. <laughs> yeah, because there's no, no oh, water on no it. The yeah. dry bridge. Just a, <laughs> just a yeah. railroad track and drains. <laughs> yeah. um, some of these recommendations are also in the, um, the open space and recreation plan, which we're developing at the same time. Um, so I just kind of brought them over because they relate to things. Mm -hmm. So drinking water supplies work to identify new sources in town um, and conduct public education campaign on water conservation techniques. Um, the high water table, the re recommendation from the open space plan was to fund and develop a hydrogeologic assessment and action plan for the town of Deerfield, which would just be trying to look into what's going on with the high just water table, the, what's the impact. The, the brook. doesn't um, work that way. No, I know, I know, but I'm saying that's, <laughs> that's, the, the, that's the common run, sense run, way to do it, is to, right is to not let house. the brook plug right. up and, and flood the whole area. Um, so right then the next section is, to, is more broader um, strategies to support um, sustainable housing development. Um, and a more livable community. So energy efficiency, this is where I um, got into that. Um, energy efficient new construction. Um, so this would be to encourage um, energy star homes or lead homes in your zoning. You could incentivize that in some way. I wonder how that would affect because we're already we've already voted to use the uh, yeah you already have the stretch code so you're stretch already code so that's going to be that cover most it doesn't of it. matter that much because the codes are going to change yeah in 2012 and then right. the stretch, stretch code is part of the base code yeah so this so, just keeps changing right yeah so it's all um, automatic we don't have the vote yeah. anymore um, you could also encourage new homes to take advantage of passive heating and cooling. Um, and that's through subdivision regulations um, and also in your zoning you could um, have something to that effect it wouldn't require anything it's just more of an encouragement um, and then the energy efficiency improvements and weatherization um, so I talk a little about the energy resources committee um, and that they provide information on free energy audits through mass saves um, they also do a green building tour uh, which is pretty neat and I noted that they should just be involved when um, developing any of those programs that would have to do with um, repairs to existing homes. They may be able to br bring other, um, you know, resources or expertise into the process. Um, increased transportation options, um, public transportation. Um, this would be. Um, what the recommendation here is to work with the FRTA and PVTA to locate a bus shelter in the South Deerfield Village Center, um, which is where the two services currently connect. Um, On Park Street or whatever you want, it's right there at the corner. Yeah, and then also providing information on the town website for, of what the bus routes are, just to provide more information to residents that the service exists. Um, and also implement recommendations from the downtown Deerfield Complete Streets and Livability Plan, which has a lot of streetscape and sidewalk improvements and things to improve South Deerfield. Um, and where'd that go? It's, it's still here. <laughs> yeah, nothing has um, been implemented. It's just the, the study's been done. Yeah, um, so that's why we're just trying to kind of keep that alive a little yeah. bit in this plan, too. Keep it from being forgotten. In fact, um, I've been assess extending a sidewalk from North Main Street to, to the area of Routes 5 and 10. If you're going to have, um, you know, try to do more development up there, you may want to look into having a sidewalk. When I was driving down here, I don't know how possible that's actually going to be. But even just 
having pedestrian accommodations just along sidewalk goes pretty far. Right, but it it's stops. A long sidewalk. It stops like before that bridge, the drive. Well, bridge. I noticed they put a sidewalk oh, all the way mean. out into that uh, mm -hmm. into the no, Oxford property. They have to. That's low. That's a code. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and oh, so you? She's talking about a sidewalk, a walking way on North beyond the dry bridge. Right. No, no. Oh, beyond the dry uh, bridge. From so the dry if, bridge to the to five and ten. Yeah. So if you're going to like. If you want to end up targeting this area for more housing development, the idea would be to have include a sidewalk if possible on both on five sides. and ten on itself. Five and ten, obviously, oh, wow. off of the road some, yeah. um, and if possible, you know, connect it to North Main. You have to go across quite, the bridge. There's a lot of land there. There are all new stones. There's land between five there. and ten and the they, dry bridge. Yeah, they do own a little bit yeah. here. It looks like, and then there's no, no. She's not talking about that. She's talking about land. From the dry bridge all the way north up five and ten. I know. Not just that stretch to five and ten. It would yeah, be no. with all the way up. It would probably be within. Um, well, we'd have to look at the right of way and everything, but it would be probably working with Mass DOT. Um, you that, know, that's definitely. On the, that's oh, yeah. on the road, but I'm just thinking when you when you do are in that little stretch, there's there's like space that it's not great. Well, no, I don't know who owns all that land, but you see where you come off the dry bridge and you come up to five and ten. That used to go straight. It didn't come yeah. out at right angles to the highway. Right. So oh, there's yeah. a great big patch of land there. I don't know who owns it, but right. probably the state does. Actually, I think, yeah, I think that's part of the right of way because I remember looking at the assessor's map. So you could there. follow the telephone poles with a the sidewalk there yeah. easily. You yeah. know? I mean, that would work. Yeah. Just cut over. Yeah. Um, somebody somebody uh, put some big bees in circles in the ground. Did you see them? <laughs> oh, actually, I did. I they had what the that's Red for. Sox bee. I think it oh, is was that what it is, just for the, the Red Sox? Yeah, Boston. It's like a crop circle thing, <laughs> yeah, right. you know what I mean? Yeah. With a bee I in saw it. that, yeah. <laughs> There's two of them side by side in that space. It's <laughs> funny. Um, I never noticed. <laughs> yeah, take a look I'm when you drive by. Drive right every something. day. <laughs> um, and then revise subdivision regulations to require or encourage connectivity of streets. So this is, um, there's a lot of uh, dead ends. Deerfield, uh -huh. and so there's. We were talking about this last time. How there's some developments where they they border each other, but you can't actually walk or between drive them. between them. So you have well, to go yeah, all but the way you, around. You got to remember this Crestview, is the, right. Is well, that's yeah. So that's an example. Place. That's an example <laughs> of. With. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can't have a back door in there. All you know those people who live over there. The uppity, yeah, yeah, those, yeah, yeah those people, yeah. So the idea is they're the ones that got to pay more taxes. He's giving me grief. I know. <laughs> the idea is in um, in the more rural areas to try to do that, or at least be able to to walk or bike to. That's a simple you know, enough thing. Yeah. To take up. But especially in the in the together. in the village center mm -hmm. to have those connections because it's more feasible to walk and bike in the village center. But if you're providing if there's barriers, it's going to be hard. Imagine how many people walk up Crestview. How many walk through my driveway? Really? Oh my God. <laughs> um, so road, that, that's what driveway. I had for that the driveway. <laughs> One thing I did realize was I um, regional I don't know, they collaborations. Do our sidewalk on Elm Street. People are going to be tripping and falling. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's part of that complete streets, streets uh, thing, yeah. plan is to improve the sidewalks. Yeah. So one thing that's missing is uh, regional collaborations. And um, I'm going to talk with some folks in my office and with MJ um, because we're doing a regional housing plan at the same time as doing this. So I can probably come up with some things and I can send those to you by email um, to make sure that they're okay. And, this, and this will this document then be available to us in, on email? Yes. So I can, I'll can. i send this out. I'm going to talk with Peggy in the morning um, to see if she had any changes that she really wants me to make. Um, and So I can quickly make those and then send, send it out. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll let you know if there's anything major that changes um, based on her review. So if we add this mm -hmm. to the one you sent out after the last meeting, then we'd have the whole thing. Right. Pretty much. Yeah. I okay. have to go through and make sure there's no little pieces missing. Yeah. Obviously, okay. we need um, a table of contents and you know cover pages and things like that. So I'll be working on doing those kind of final things, um, and then I want to do an executive summary. Okay. Um, but right. I'll send this out tomorrow. Um, any comments, changes, um, edits you have, send them to me. Um, so the next plan is to. Um, present uh, 
the goals and recommendations at the planning board meeting the next yeah, I was going to say do you really want to do a lot of changes today I mean you can do some but you probably want to wait till the planning board meeting well I want to get if you have input that you feel like we should integrate into these things before, before it gets there. we, we yeah, present okay. to the planning board I definitely want to know that doesn't mean that we won't make changes after that but yeah um, I wouldn't I wouldn't even hazard a guess of the zoning stuff mm -hmm. until we meet with the whole board okay well I'll also see what Peggy thinks about sure. it because she knows sure. a lot um, so so Paul should I how how do I go about should I contact um, it's John been in our minutes Peggy? it's been in our minutes and and yeah call John directly yeah and, and ask, ask him to be about, put on the okay on the agenda and then what about inviting the select board who should do that I do thought that was so? done already did no I don't know. I don't think so not formally okay all right would that be some I can talk to John. When I talk to John, I'll see. Well, if he and the other thing too is to there. actually talk to Casey and uh, mm -hmm. the people in the office there too, because they'll yeah. they'll set up the agenda. And when they set up the agenda, that has to be done a week before the. I know. Meeting. Yeah, I include there Casey and everything. Yeah, there you go. That that'll <laughs> get it. She'll get it. She'll um, get it going. You know okay, what I mean? so we'll we'll talk to that. John too. Yep. Yeah. So Definitely. we'll get that set up. Yeah. Um, and I can um, I can send. The presentation I can create a presentation and send it out to all of you beforehand if you want to you think it's really going to deviate from hmm? this no she's talking about a presentation oh no it'd be the, great at the at the planning board right if you have time to do that that'd be fantastic okay I will try you want to come to the planning board meeting <laughs> hey who'd miss the fun December December what what's the day December this it's the first Monday it's early it's like yeah, second or third December would be f the second. Yeah. The first Monday is that's the second. It. That's the next uh, okay. planning board meeting. And what time is the that? The Monday after. It'll be um, well. I assume it's going to be at seven o'clock. Up there. Up there. Unless they say it's okay. earlier. Seven o'clock here. Yeah, yeah, right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it will be part of your. And whatever meeting. you send, we can put onto a screen here too. Right. I mean, yes. Definitely. Have that ready to go when you get here. Yep. What's the okay. date? It's December second. It's a Monday. Okay. It's the that, one after Thanksgiving. What, what is, yep. What's going to happen on December oh, that's, that's the planning next planning board meeting where this is going to be presented to the planning board and the, select and board. the selectmen mm -hmm. all together, and there'll be lots of discussion about it, I'm sure. Can <laughs> I come just? Bet. You can come, sure. Yes, come on. I would love. As Everybody many, can oh, come. Anybody yes. that wants to. I'll send out the. <laughs> so I'm an employee. Like I, I, I'm actually, it's kind of my part of my work to be. Oh. Well, and I'll send okay. this out to everyone. I have an email list of everyone who's been involved to mm -hmm. invite them to Terrific. come because we need as much support too. Um, and and so it's good to mm. have you all here who have been working on this. Um, okay. Well, this was good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You're the one working your butt off here. This is fantastic. Well this is a ton of work. Well, I it's hope, great. I hope it will lead to. Something. Something successful. Oh, believe me, we all <laughs> do. Because half of your grade 